All is fair in Love Warren Challenges. I, this is a dirty game, bro. And what I've always said is all is fair in love, war, and challenges. 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 And Welcome to another edition of Love, War, Challenges. I am MTV Malik, and I'm joined with Becky and Tyler and Antonio. We have a special guest in the house for you. Today, we are joined by Cara Maria. How you doing, Cara? Welcome What's to the up, show. What's up, you guys? I'm doing amazing. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. The last time you was here, I made a big thing about making sure I go through and list all of your accomplishments, but at this point, I think your reputation precedes you. What do you think? Um, I think let's just get to the good stuff. If they're really curious, they can Google it. <laughs> <laughs> let's go ahead and jump right into it. Becky, kick it off. Okay. So last season, you took a pretty hard loss, coming up short in the final during War of the Worlds 2. Did you, did you do anything differently between the seasons to prepare for this season, training-wise or politics-wise? The, the only thing that, that really killed it for me on last season, it was the hardest final that has ever been had in challenge history. The hardest final. The only thing that got, for, that got it for me was the math. If I was able to math, I would have at least ended up in that very final portion, the last four people, and I probably still would have ended up being, you know, fourth place, which I'm really, there's only so much you can do against greats that are, you know, Turbo, Theo, and Wes. You know, so... Bless Ninja and her math skills for <laughs> making it there instead of me. But really, if I was better at math, I just would have been in Ninja's spot. So there's really not much more I can do to outrun and outperform three dudes in that aspect. It was a really grueling, grueling final. Do you think the final was, wasn't set up fairly because um, no women were able to take home any money? I mean, I... If I really, if I really could have changed anything about it, I would wish that there would be, you know, first, second, third guy, first, second, third girl with the way that that final was laid out. Um, I was pretty thankful for the vendettas aspect because they cut it down to, you know, two guys, two girls and let there be a first, second, third, fourth place. And I thought that's what was going to happen last season on that final and they didn't. So, I mean, realistically, it is what it is. And if, if I can't outrun Turbo, that's my own thing. If I can't outrun Theo, if I can't outrun Wes, that's my own thing. It was a lot, a lot of footwork that final. And I didn't do too well on any of the checkpoints. So, <laughs> the games are not really considering what the final was and who I went against, I'm really proud of how I did. Are you better at Connect Four now? No. <laughs> no. No. I'm so dead. Like, I remember going up to that, like, I was so stoked that I got that question right. And, like, I got there and I saw it was Connect Four and I was like, and then it was like, wait for the next person. And I was like, no. And then I was like, it's okay, because I'm going to plan out how I'm going to do this Connect Four. Nobody's going to beat me. They're going to be tired from running. And then the first person beats me, and then the second person beats me, and then the third person beats me. And I'm just like, why? Because this, this goes to show you that literally anything can happen in a challenge final. You think it's going to come down to just, oh, who's the strongest? Who can run the best? But... Then you get all these weird things in between. Like, they could pull out, you know, the game operation that you haven't touched <laughs> since you were five years old. You don't know what they're going to do. They can do anything. And that's why the challenges are so exciting is because it's not just an all-out who's the best physical specimen. Because anything can happen. But being in good shape definitely freaking helps. So don't just sit around and smoke cigarettes and drink wine all day. <laughs> <laughs> or do. Or do. All right, so let's move on to this season. Uh, as we can see, it's obviously a lot different than last season. And we saw during the first episode how the tribunal was set up. We saw Jordan just raise his hand and voluntarily become a uh, House Speaker. Do you think the way the tribunal was formed should have been that way? Or do you think it, would have been, it should have been based on how you performed on that competition day? I think it should have been based on performance every single time. Um, I think that's what made last season, war, the first War of the Worlds, so good. Um, that's why I was able to save myself. That's why 
uh, Polly was able to save himself because he was pretty much always in the tribunal because of how he performed. Um, so I think it should always come down to performance because that's how you keep the best around. You get rewarded for doing well. Otherwise, it's just, you know, like Nani, who did not perform at all on uh, the trivia one, it was just like, no, I deserve to be in this tribunal. And everybody was like, yeah, sure, okay, here you go, Nani, you can be the leader. And it's like, but you, and you didn't even do anything. You know what I mean? Like, I shouldn't have been in it. Like, I wouldn't be in it. If whoever performed the best answered the right questions, you deserve to be in it. But this was a game of uh, whose hands are you holding? Now, was there a lot more arguments going into who was the house speaker? Because well, from what we saw, we didn't really see much of like a argument. Like it was more like, oh, whoever raised the hand first was the house speaker. Uh, the first time when Jordan raised his hand <clears throat> first, it was because we didn't know what was going to happen. We were like, yeah, okay, well, you already, you know, if you want to take control of this, go ahead. Because we didn't know how the game was going to be played. It was before TJ really announced the rules, and then TJ's like, okay, and now you can pick somebody from either team, and we're like. Uh, but it's a guy day and I was like great um, <laughs> so you just kind of we let them take the reins and then the second one everybody was still playing like team USA even though they were faking it because they were all plotting on what they were doing you know I was like team USA rah 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 and like literally Johnny's running around the house trying to like him and Laurel find a way to like throw things and get rid of me and Polly as soon as possible um and uh, when that all came out, we did what we did. So then it was, at that point, the only thing that went in our favor was when, because once Johnny did what he did, um, and Laurel did what she did, um, you saw that scene where Polly sat with me on the couch and he was like, all right, well, just get ready. It's gonna be me, it's gonna be you, it's gonna be Ninja, we're gonna go in every single time. Um, and the only thing we could do is just save ourselves in eliminations. And I was like, yeah, I was like, I'm prepared to go in. It's not about having to see the eliminations. It's just about, I truly thought like we could put our shit at the door and work as a team and just win. Why, why is it so hard that we can't just vote people in on the other team? Like, why are we throwing, like, why am I competing when people are trying to throw a challenge? Like, it just feels gross. So we were prepared to go in and it wasn't until Ninja got that clutch win over Laurel that flipped the numbers ever so slightly in our favor that we were able to start taking control of the tribunal. And that's what we did. And we actually were working with uh, Leroy pretty early on. As soon as Johnny left, we were pretty much working with Leroy. And I know that it's not, you're not seeing it so much, but um, Leroy and Polly were talking all the time. Like Leroy was a thousand percent clued into everything we were doing. Like it was, we were working together and we were working with Turbo too, as much as other people would, so unless he was playing the greatest game ever and thinking, you know, and letting everybody think that he was working with everybody, but Turbo was with us too from the beginning. We did not want Turbo gone. We did not want him gone. So, well, speaking of uh, bananas and Laurel trying to throw challenges and everything, uh, the entire time, viewers and fans, all we saw was bananas constantly reminding everybody that everybody's on their own. Uh, and everybody's just playing their own separate game. Do you think that was positive for, or negative on Team USA? Like, how did that start to divide everybody if it did? That's pretty negative. Like, if you're starting as a team, and it, you know, it's literally in the rules there. Like, if you work as a team, you can just keep voting on the other side over and over and over again. You're on a team. And when you have somebody on your team that from day one is like, we're not a team. We're not a team. We're not a team because you're the one saying we're not a team. You're the one orchestrating to get half of the team gone because you hate me and Polly. Like he's saying that since day one because that's what he was doing. That was his plan. And so when you have somebody saying we're not a team, we're not a team, how does that make you feel being on a team with that person? It's just shitty. Let's talk about that crazy elimination between Ninja and Laurel. In your opinion, did the right person win that elimination? Thousand million quadrillion percent. So <laughs> the way that things go down is I've been in multiple, you know, eliminations. I've seen eliminations where one person's doing something on one side, the other person's doing something on the other side. If you get to the top and you ring the bell and you say, done, done, check, 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 the other person can continue what they're doing. TJ should not have blown the horn, but... Usually it's like, okay, check. And like the other person will always continue working because you never know what's going on. When I was in the bloodlines elimination against Johnny and Vince, tons of times they're like, check, check, we're done. Me and Jamie never stopped working. 
And so we were allowed to continue to do what we're doing until we were like, check, we're right. So for Laurel to get to the top, you know, make her own hole and then be like, yeah, F you, suck my pussy bitches. Like for her to be that disgusting of a human and think that she won it in that, you know, and celebrate the way she did. Um, you know, people are like, humble car, humble car. Have I ever behaved that way? Ever? And they're like, Laurel is like a legend and a great. And it's like, but you're a terrible human. Like, you're just an awful human. Like, people shit on me for I, whatever reason they need to. For fucking winning. For, for winning, I guess. And then for it's like, Laurel can be the most cocky, evil, condescending, like, I'm going to murder you and then, like, eat your children. And people are like, yeah, you're so cool. But they're like, fuck you, Kara, because you're confident. Like, fucking math doesn't add up. Anyway, I'm bad at math anyway, so we don't even have to talk about that. But... <laughs> 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 So, Matt's a sensitive <clears throat> uh, Ninja absolutely, like, bless her heart, she was excited that it was a climbing thing. That would, be, that would be like me showing up to an arena and seeing horses and then being like, now brush the horse and put the saddle on. I'd be like, yeah! Horses! Let me pat the horse, let me pat the horse. And she's like, let me climb the tree, let me climb the tree. Like, she was happy and excited, as you should be. You know, if that's your way to hype yourself up before an elimination, do it. Look at how people hype themselves up before, like, fights, MMA fights. Hype yourself up. Be how you want to be. But when you win, win with class. And Laurel was like, screw Ninja for being happy about climbing a tree. And then when she thought she won, she was like, fuck you. And it's like, when Ninja decided, you know, found out wrong hole, oh, wrong hole, same wrong hole, and went up, you know, she was, like, quietly, like, smiling, like, you know, with class. And she just held herself with class. and. The world didn't. And the way that that whole elimination went down was a thousand percent. Ninja was already at the top. Laurel was halfway to bottom when Ninja had her last peg. So even at that point, if Ninja just stuck it where Laurel, you know, had put hers and just made her own hole, then we could say, oh, Ninja won. Ninja was that. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, Ninja's a faster climber. It is what it is. Laurel might have an extra five feet on her, but. Ninja's still a faster climber. Is there any chance that you and Laurel mend your friendship? I, we can't. There's no mending that, really. I don't mind. I don't want to ever have hatred in my heart for someone, and I don't have any for her, but I also don't have a need for someone like, like her in my life. And I truly feel like when it comes to Laurel, if she had come into this challenge game and had had her focus uh, on winning, rather than her focus on me, she would have made it farther. But I think she was blinded by her obsession with me and either, you know, wanting to get me out, wanting to get Polly out, wanting to, you know, run the game and show everybody how she's the most dominant person and I'm a piece of shit, whatever she wanted to show. Like, her obsession with that and, you know, catering to what the fans wanted of her, I think just she got in her own way. She should have focused on the finish line, not on me. All right. Fantastic. And De Julie wants to know, was there any off-camera conversations that you guys had that wasn't shown? Between you no. and Laura. We just, I stayed out of her. I just stayed away. So let me ask you, in episode five, you had a breakdown in the bar while you was talking to Josh. You was trying to get him on your side and to vote your way. And there was a very great moment where you're walking down the stairs and you look back at the camera. And we really want to know what that look was about. Was that look for the viewers at home? Or what was really behind that look? It was to make sure that there was no way that anybody could think that I was actually crying and that that was real. <laughs> like, I wanted to, like, really, like, stick it in there. Like, this is an act. Because me and Polly had talked about this. Um, he was the one that came up with the idea. And he's like, look, we need to know where Josh stands. Maybe we could still salvage him. Maybe we could still get him back. And I was like, you know what? Let's do it. So the plan was to have me go to him to try to cry, to appeal to his emotions, to be like, look, like you need to understand why I need to make this move. But he was so gung ho about saving Johnny that that's when we knew the, all we got out of that. The reason why I did that was to find out how far gone Josh really was. And he was a thousand percent with Johnny. And we figured that out with that conversation there with the way he would rationalize. I put in Wes because he hurts my feelings, but don't put in Johnny, despite the fact that you have 10 years of history with him and he just threw a challenge to try to get you in. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, so um, Josh was completely gone. And then we found out even after the fact, like he had already, Johnny had called Josh 
apparently before the season even started and it already like rallied him up. We didn't know that, but um, we figured it out in the game and then it was confirmed after the season. Didn't Johnny get on everybody else about making, you know, arrangements with Wes about coming in? We're all a bunch of fucking hypocrites and Johnny's the king. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Speaking about uh, Johnny, we, we all know that you and him have a long history and some of it's great, some of it's not. And when you guys were forced to work with each other on Vendettas, a lot of people loved it. So don't call me Shirley wants to know, is there anything that Vendettas can do to earn your forgiveness and trust back? You can't trust Johnny, ever. Like you're his mom, don't trust him. You're his sister, fucking don't trust him. You're his girlfriend, especially don't trust him. <laughs> um, you were, you're with him in the game, don't trust him. You can never trust Johnny. He has done, <laughs> Me and Johnny got along for one season. For most of it, we were against each other. Always butted heads. We got along for one and a half <clears throat> seasons where we worked together. But the way that he has gone after, you know, myself, my relationship, like, it's just, if you want to be my friend, then, then you're my friend. But you can't try to be my friend and then tear apart at me and Polly and the things that he's done, like there's no repairing that. From the shit that Johnny has done, there is actually no repairing that. There's no repairing that, there's no going back. I mean, the, the levels that this guy will go for himself, I don't think Johnny even has one true friend because he's the most selfish human being on the planet. Everything is about him, what he can gain from it. I don't think that his relationship with me was even real. I think it was more like, oh, this looks good. King and queen of the challenge, the two faces of the challenge. This looks good together. Like, I don't think there was anything truly genuine. I think everything was for show with him. Um, and he only became my friend when he had nobody else. And my friend, more so, it was an alliance uh, final reckoning. And then uh, ever since Polly came in the picture, I mean, he was not a Polly fan from the moment he met him. Like, him, Zach, the other guys were just making fun of Polly nonstop from the moment that Polly walked into the uh, Final Reckoning house, made fun of him the entire time he was in Redemption, um, made fun of him every time he came back. I mean, Johnny's sitting there laughing while a guy that I, you know, had a whole thing with was fucking around with other girls, but he's like still best friends with him. Like, can you explain to me how Johnny could be BFFF with a guy that did what, you know, did me dirty the way he did two seasons ago, but yet hates the shit out of Polly. For what? Tell me what worse thing Polly has done than that other guy. So like, how can you be cool with one and not the other? And like, it's been, you wanna know why? It's because the other one is his puppet. He will do everything that Johnny asks of. He will follow along like, oh yes, Johnny, we're best friends, we're in an alliance. Polly's not. Polly has his own brain. He has his own human. He's actually a threat in competitions. Um, he's a threat in the politics of the game. I mean, Polly has shown strategy, um, athletics. He's shown he can stand on his own. And the other one just follows and hopes to be saved and hopes to play neutral. Like, do you see the difference of why Johnny's okay with one, despite what he did to me? He's not okay with the other one, despite the fact that I am with him and love him and we're good. Like, well, I think he's all right. <laughs> So, <laughs> Polly, yeah. I mean, we live together. We're like, we, there is not a human being on earth. You can see whatever you want to see in edits. You can see whatever you want to think of us on social media, but we spend every freaking minute of every freaking day together. Like, we barely spend any time apart. And so, nobody knows me the way he knows me. Nobody knows him the way I know him. And so at this point, it's like everybody else is just going to base what they want to on little snippets of our lives. So I don't just, need to prove anything to anybody other than the fact that we live together and we're happy. So curious question. If you had to pick, who would you trust more, Johnny or the other guy? None, neither, never. <laughs> <laughs> They're the same. One's the brain, one's the follower. <laughs> We'll be back in a moment. You're listening to Love War Challenges. What's good? Uh, how's it going? This is uh, Derek. Derek Kaczynski. So this is Polly, and you're listening to Love War Challenges. What up, Malik? This is Car Maria. This is a shout out to the Love War and Challenges podcast. You're totally awesome. 
Love War Challenges. For anyone listening to this, they're at LWC Podcast. World's most dangerous podcast. Okay, well, speaking of the other guy, um, you... Polly and him had a lot of drama, um, obviously coming off Final Reckoning, moving into War of the Worlds. Uh, but this season, it's been muted. Uh, there's nothing really shown up until like uh, episode nine, a couple episodes ago. Uh, just kind of wondering, is it just it's over with? It's done? It's not important? Or is there no edit for it? We just had... Uh, I wanted a stronger rival. We had, so we had, we had, <laughs> yeah, we have bigger fish to fry. Like, he's really insignificant. I mean, he tried the best he could from day one to like say our names over and over, like in any chance he could, he, he tried to be in the tribunal so he could say my name. Um, but we didn't care. We're like, keep, keep trying. And he I couldn't. actually, I actually thought it was hilarious when one of us did you see what they did to me last season? Are you serious what they did to me last season? What? Like, it was a pretty good moment. It's like, I yeah. wish I wish that they would have shown him begging for me not to go into an elimination with him. And I was like, you know, dude, fine. When you're all healed, we'll do it. And instead, I got to sit here and watch his dumb ass after he gets eliminated <laughs> going through the movie. Like, oh, my right hip, Polly. Let's see him with my hip, Polly. It's like, oh, my God. Yeah, that Fucking happened. Shit. I'm sure you guys already know that story. How he had uh, begged Polly not to face him. He's like, I'm already broken. You've already won. You've already won. I've been crying every day. I just want to go home to your mom. I'm broke. I haven't heard that. And then what Polly, story is this? You my boyfriend's back home. Run it back from the beginning because I don't know this story. You don't know this story? No. I do not. This is pure facts on camera. Decided it at I, I whatever mean, reason. I mean, I made, I made Kyle it. cry almost every day on World of Worlds 1. I made it a personal point of mine to make him cry every day. To the point where he was moping around the house and people were feeling sorry for him. And then he came that elimination day and he limps up to me with his broken toe and his broken wrist. And he's like, he's like, mate, he goes, man to man, I know you're a warrior. There's no honor in beating a broken man. Like, you've already won. Like, I'm broken. Like, there's no honor in beating a broken man. Like, like, let's do this but next season. Like, you're healthy, I'm healthy. Like, I just want to make a final man. Like, you've already run this season. Like, please, like, just go, don't go, don't go down there with me. He's like, we could do it another time. And then you and, guys shook hands. And then we shook hands, and I was like, you know what, dude? Like, respect. Like, I made your life a living hell this season. You know, I, I can respect that. You know what? Like, good luck tomorrow. I'm going to do my interviews uh, all day. No food, no fucking water, no nothing. And I'm just going to fucking go to the elimination, and that's why... Yeah, I was shocked to see the edit because I was like, oh, man. So basically it was just it was played up that like because the interviews that you saw the come and get me. I'm right here. That's after he's already been eliminated. And that all he my interviews that. were like from the first time his, when I was like, yeah. when I was like, hey, TJ, take the girls out of it. Let me come down. Yeah. And TJ's like, no. And I'm like, well, all right, fuck it. So basically that is magic and we go with it. While I got both of you guys here, is it safe to say the devil's triangle between Kara Paulie and Kyle is dead, and we could all move on from it. There was like no triangle. There was a line. There was. <laughs> there was there. So we could all put it to bed. Yeah, there was. There was. I, I sent him home in Final Reckoning, took his woman, and then uh, embarrassed him on War of the Worlds 1. Basically, there you go. I love how restrained Paulie is all the time. I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, his, his Kyle accent was spot on. <laughs> It was, yeah, was actually, that was my best one. I, I, actually, I, I actually could do his accent, but I'm good with accents. I did Josh pretty good this season. Yeah. He was oh. so cute. Let's hear a nice sample. He's hard, he's, hard to, he's hard to sit here on the couch with me. Let's hear an example. Guys, I swear to God, I got my own brain. I'm not playing Bananas game. This is 100% <laughs> me. I'm the worst Big Brother winner in history. I just cried and flip-flopped to both sides. Woo! Just like I'm doing in the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> that's, oh. that's not that's not the enemy that you want Polly. no it's not but hold on i think wait i think i can do a better cow you should shit talk ct real quick no i can't <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, you know? i'm in theo's face just trying to get you ct you know i'm in theo's face i'm in jordan's face and you know i'm sitting here i'm like oh come on guys i'm like fuck yeah. oh, josh josh oh josh Joss is way more proper. Joss is way more proper. Joss, hold on, let's see Joss. Joss doesn't really have any. Hold on, I got, I got him, I got him, I got him. All right, listen, bro. So, my name's Joss Mooney. 
probably the most attractive man that's ever been on the challenge. Um, uh, I was a rugby player, now I'm a fitness uh, guru. Uh, I got the prettiest eyes ever. Uh, if you're female, all I gotta do is look at you and boom. In my bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, that was good too. That was good too. That was pretty That's accurate. That's my show. You're gonna get. Yeah, all right, all right. You're to say yes and get your own podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to stay as silent as possible. You no, are. You can't. You can't. Well, I just, I, you know, you're funny, so I like to be funny. I'm too. not funny. You're funny. You're funny. You're funny. You're funny. You're funny. You're funny. If you um, wanted anybody from Team UK to come over to your side, who would it have been, or would it be at this point? Uh, CT. It would always be CT. Like, CT in a heartbeat. But at this point, um, the numbers, I think, on the UK side are still slightly fragile. So everybody who had just an important role to play on Team USA and our alliance and the alliance on Team UK, it was very, very fragile, very important that every person played their part. So CT was working with us. He was trying to be like, oh, I'm neutral, but he was working with us. You know, so if you want to call it the Cars Cult or Polly Puppets or the Cam Collection or <laughs> uh, whatever you want to call us, uh, Ashley's Assassins, Leroy's Legion, Leroy's Legion. Yeah. I mean, we were all part of it. So they're trying to just like you know peg at a few of us, but it was actually a huge. I've never had an alliance before. I don't think ever. Like especially like this. So to have a group of people that had my back as well as you know as hard as I had theirs, like it was something I've never had before in a challenge. So it was really amazing. Like it was really a new experience, like to actually be a part of an alliance. People. Mm. It, Someone actually really liked you. Ninjas, ninjas be like to. I, that's just what I go with. I, could, I couldn't think of another N word. You shouldn't. No, I know. There's not really <laughs> good. a good attack. Just leave attack that word. one. Yeah, ninjas, ninjas. Ninjas are good N word. Let's leave it. You know what's funny is like, People watching might hate me, but the people in my alliance love me. Correct. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I'm just going to put this Why? on the record, okay? Because you say people hate you. Reddit makes up 1% of the viewers. Okay, that's fair. Okay? Just those people. And then the loud trolls make up less than 10% mm -hmm. of, you know, who watch. Like, come on now. That's true. Happy people don't go to complain about shit online. Don't. You know? You ain't going to leave a, net, you know, a positive Yelp review. That's true. You know? A negative young man. Michael, this sushi was delicious. I'm coming back. I'm I'm Sebastian Maniscalco, where I'm just like, hey babe, salmon suck. Let's get the fuck out of here. Oh, yeah. that's my boy right there. That's my boy. That's my boy right there. <laughs> are, we, are we on talking terms again, Bananas Defender? Uh, yeah. <laughs> we, 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 where are we? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he did it? No. Happy people don't leave Yelp tribute. It's true. <laughs> You know, you and Georgia seem to get along pretty well. Last season, what what happened to the complete one eighty this year? Well, this season, I should say. This season is just we're in different alliances. It's like I got along with a lot of people, but we're just in different alliances, and some people take it personally. And Georgia, I think she was uncomfortable with the fact that like she was working, obviously actively against uh, me and Polly and the other people I was working with. So it's like. You're not working with us. You're working against us. And it didn't mean we couldn't be friends, but I mean, I had to just realize like, oh, okay. So you're coming in here. You're working with, you know, the Tory, the Nani, the, I mean, Jennifer really just was there for like the, the, the competition aspect, Jenny, but she was still with them by default. Um, yeah. She just, she just wasn't working with us. She was literally, I mean, from the time that, the Laurel and Johnny threw that challenge and Georgia was trying so hard to be in the tribunal and then elect, you know, Kyle and whoever else she wanted to be in it with her it was only like, cause we're coming for you, Kara. So it was like, okay, so you're not working with us. Cool. Let's talk about Jordan for a while. Uh, you and Jordan have a long history, but for some reason you two can never get onto the same page. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that you and Jordan always have this big divide and just can never come together? It wasn't always. If you watch Free Agents, me, Jordan, and Zach all got along really well. Um, I rooted for him. I cheered him on um, when he went against Johnny, and I thought that was like a ballsy move. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, go you. Like, got along with him. Got along with him for like half of Dirty 30 when he came back. But in Dirty 30, I was really getting along with Veronica and Jemmy and Anissa and Jordan, you know, was vile. 
that season. He was just a horrible person to be in a house with. He was extremely condescending. He was disgusting towards Jemmy and Veronica and Anissa and even myself. He was holding, you know, Kayla and Jenna, you know, to a standard. He was at that point really up Johnny's butt. And it, you know, it was a far cry from the Jordan that I meant that was like, you know, his own person. Like, I'm going to, you know, go against the grain here. I'm going to send Johnny home. Like, fuck this. Like, it was just a follow the sister kind of a Jordan. Um, and then what really sealed the deal for me was when we were in redemption and he said, you know, nobody wants to run a final with you. You're weak. Nobody likes you. you know, like, you're just going off on me. You have a man's body. And at that point, I was like, okay, well, fuck this guy, you know, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> I don't like you. And from, you know, from that point to the point where, you know, he got to make a nice cameo at the Vendetta's reunion, um, even though he was just a mercenary and he spent half the Vendetta's reunion just shitting on me, being like, you don't deserve to win. You didn't deserve to win. You're weak. You suck. And it's like, and I had to run on stage. Like I actually let him get to me and I cried instead of being like, oh, I fucking want money cash. So whether I deserved it or not, or whether I'm the weakest person in the world and I just got real lucky, I still got the money at the bank. So fuck you, Jordan. But <laughs> that is who I am now. <laughs> so yeah, he, I just, he's just an asshole. I don't like him and he doesn't like me and that's fine. We just not like each other. But there's just definitely a lot of history there. And he's just a shitty human. He's just a shitty fucking human. Like the way that he goes after people, the way that he degrades women, the way that he, uh, the racist shit that he's said in the past, you know, mm. with regards to and everything else. I mean, he's just a disgusting, gross human. And the fact that anybody could support him or be a fan of him and then at the same time try to shit on Polly when most of the people that love Polly are women doesn't add up. Just saying. Moving on from people who speak negatively about you, uh, mm -hmm. I actually want to talk about your friends in this challenge because you you seem to have a whole squad with you. Let's talk about your alliance. Yeah. What, what was going on there? Tell us more about how that came together. I also kind of want to know more about Ashley. From day one, I was like, I wouldn't talk to her, actually. Like, I didn't even make eye contact with her at the airport before we started the challenge. Polly had apparently been talking to Ashley and wanted, you know, us to just make amends and be cool. And that kind of was fostered. Like Ashley had the luxury of being able to choose which alliance she really wanted to be in. And I think in the beginning, she was more on Johnny's side. And then I think when she saw kind of the power switch, plus she was in our room. When you're in a room with someone, you just kind of become closer to them by default. And she was literally in the bunk bed right next to me. So, you know, we'd see each other all the time, we'd joke, we just got past our differences. And then I discovered that, you know, she, she sat down, she talked to me, and it was like, I've got a girl here. And what shows me the world about her character is that when there's the way that the challenge world works, there's so much jealousy and insecurity and cattiness among the girls that it's, it shows a lot about the character of someone. Instead of Ashley trying to, you know, ride the Tory Jordan Nani train and be like, yeah, you know, fuck Kara, like I'm gonna get my third win, <clears throat> Kara can go home. She instead was like, Kara, I wanna run a fine with you. Like, I wanna get my third win with you. So she was just showing me like, real, really like who she is there. That says the world to me. When, especially with the way that other girls have been, like the same with Cam. Cam's like, I'm a queen, but you're all queens too. That's the type of woman Cam is. Like, she's a strong woman. She's not threatened by other strong women. She wants to work with them. She wants to be friends with them. And she will assert herself. Ninja is, you know, people look at her as like the weirdo this, the weirdo that. You're really trying to call it Ninja Warrior Week. You're out of your freaking mind. You're trying to call it Ninja Warrior Week who came in as the only girl to finish in the hardest final in challenge history. What about Maddie, this big dominating girl? She didn't finish the first day. What about Georgia, the girl that, you're trying to hype up as like the greatest thing to happen in the challenge land. She didn't make it past the first freaking circle, but you want to call Ninja Week who finished it? Where is, where is your brain? Brain thoughts, I'm not, it doesn't add up. There's so much math that doesn't add up. And so I look at these girls, I see a lot of myself in Ninja because she loves to climb things. I do too, I'm not as good as it is her. She's a, she's a land, actually she's an air creature. I'm a land creature, but we're both really not water people. Um, <laughs> She's way better at math than me, but she gets that she really likes to be alone or just hang out with her one friend, you know, like her and Dee will go off or she likes to do her, her own thing. And I see so much of myself in her. And I feel like she's misunderstood by the people that need a scapegoat 
So right now she's their scapegoat when that used to be me. So I freaking love her. Welcome to the cult, the puppets, the assassins, the, the, the other ninjas, like whatever you want to call us, welcome. Because apparently we all started to become so much closer when the other side did what they did, trying to turn the game on us, go against us, you know, things got turned in our favor with oh, ninja winning. I know, the bus ride too. I can, I can even tell you about that, a little side fun, little insider thing that you'll never see. But just as far as our alliance goes, we've been called weak, we've been called layups, we've been called, you know, the, the losers. And so us band of misfits gathered together and was said, okay, well, if you're gonna do that, we're gonna do this. And that's how we've become where we are today. Side note, you want to hear a little little fun story about before the challenge was thrown? Yes, we would. On the bus ride, on the bus ride to that challenge where the challenge was thrown, the entire bus ride, you had very loudly in the back of the bus, basically me and my alliance would sit in the front of the bus and just be quiet and just get ready for the challenge. The back of the bus, they were singing, they were joking, they were loud. They're like, they're like, whoa, whoa, what happens if Kara and Ninja go into elimination against each other. Oh, oh, what if Kara and Laurel go against each other? Oh, but Laurel already wore like a backpack. Oh, and it was just like the entire time they were just yelling, what about Kara versus Cam? Oh, and they were going off and laughing and taunting <clears throat> us. So they knew their plan from the very beginning. The other side was in on it. That's why the tribunal was being fought over. To who would be in the tribunal they thought they could manipulate idris they couldn't um and it was told to me by idris by esther that johnny and laurel spent freaking hours trying to manipulate them to put me in so it was like that's where i stood and so for anybody who wants to shit on me for where i am now because their plan didn't work out sorry i'm not sorry you can hate me all you want but I'm here and they're gone. So the only way that any of the haters' favorites are going to make it far in a game is if me and Polly aren't around. So, there. Yeah. Anyway, fun chat. <laughs> <laughs> so much juice. <laughs> Whatever you drink. So you know, even like the taunting, like in the very beginning, like the first few, um, the first few challenges that you're watching, like when we would go to the club. The taunting, like when they thought they had the power, like we're quiet. We just hang out with each other and do our thing. When the other alliance thought that they had the power, they segregated me and Polly. Like we sat together at a table and like, they're like, oh, bad energy. Oh, nobody go over there. Anybody that came and sat with us, they would find a way to run a train on them to pull them away. Like they wanted us. You want to talk about bullying and the shit that you didn't get to see? It's the way that we were separated, the way that we were treated, we were treated like outcasts, like pariahs. Like if you talk to us, now you're damaged goods. And it's like, we were treated like shit. And so when we finally got the chance to flip and get the numbers, we never treated anybody else like shit. Fuck, we even let Nani be in the tribunal. You know what I mean? She's part of the other side. It's like, I think we're being very fair, to be honest. And the way that we were treated wasn't, but you know, that's something that I'm telling you about because you need to see. Oh, side note, want to know some extra tea on tonight's episode? A little mud pit challenge? Yes, we do. Um, before that happened, Jordan, we were having a pizza night. And I'm surprised that you guys didn't get to see this, but we were having a pizza night. And Ninja comes in and was like, oh, look it, there's more pizza coming. And like, Jordan just snapped at her. Like, she said something completely innocent, like, oh, yeah, there's more pizza coming. And I forget what the hell Jordan said to her, but he said something like completely just out of line and rude. And I'm like, Jordan, what the hell is your problem with Ninja? Because, like, he would pick on Ninja all the time. He would poke, 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 pick on her, condescend her. He made her cry multiple times. We're not seeing any of this. But that's why Ninja freaking hated him. And I remember standing up for her. And she, because she would just get angry and start, like, explaining herself and defending herself and going back at him. And that's, like, a losing battle. And you're going to go down that hole and giving attention to someone that just doesn't deserve it. And I'm like, Ninja. He doesn't deserve your attention. Let's just go. Like, he's not worth it. And then Josh is saying, like, oh, that's rude. You're going to say he's not worth it? And I'm like, and it turned into this whole thing <laughs> where I finally got Ninja out of the room. And we laughed. And I was like, fuck Jordan. Fuck Jordan. And Jordan's like, it's okay. Girls Day is coming up, Kara. Girls Day is coming up. 
don't worry. And then he told the entire house he was going to throw it. So you want to know how weird it is that Jordan was the first one gone in that mud pit challenge? Huh. He was telling everybody he was going to throw it. And then huh. weird that Josh tackled his own damn teammate. Are we not going to talk about that? Josh tackling Leroy. Did we not see Josh all over Leroy? Is it so weird that that alliance was trying to throw it on Girls' Day because they thought they had their tribunal set up with saying Jenny could be the speaker, pulling in Leroy, uh, pulling in Theo, pulling in Georgia. Everything's added up now, but that's something that apparently I'm the only one that gets to tell you, and maybe a couple people listen to this, a few people listen to this are going to learn. But uh, that was exactly what was going on, is Jordan was like, my toe hurts. Like, he did something to his toe, like running around the pool, and he's like, I'm injured, my toe hurts. Ooh, girls' day is coming up. How can you play without me? Have fun learning how to play without me. And instead of sitting out, he went in, Josh tackles Leroy, and Jordan's the first one gone. That's all I'm saying. And all I'm saying is I still think that the reason why I didn't get picked oh, yeah. and is because I told Theo after we fought, I said, I hope the next challenge is physical because I'm going to break something out of your body. Yeah, and, and Polly doesn't I, get to play. And then I didn't get to play. It's okay. So Polly, Polly was going to ruin someone. That would have been the first physical thing I get to watch Polly in. Actually, you did really good on the, the mud, the mud, mud ball. ball. One. Yeah, you were in yeah. the tribunal on that. God forbid. Anyways, God it makes more, it, it, it makes better TV if Jordan goes in and loses. We'll be back in a moment. You're listening to Love War Challenges. What's good? Uh, how's it going? This is uh, Derek. Derek Kaczynski. So this is Polly, and you're listening to Love War Challenges. What up, Malik? This is Cara Maria. This is a shout out to the Love War and Challenges podcast. We are totally awesome. Love War Challenges. For anyone listening to this, they're at LWC Podcast. World's most dangerous podcast. All right. So you mentioned Ninja earlier. Uh, a lot of your castmates are really hard on Ninja. Why do you think that everybody is so tough on Ninja these days? See, you're saying everybody the same way people used to say everybody about me. It's not everybody. It's just the people that weren't working with us. Does Leroy say anything bad about Ninja? Does CT say anything bad about Ninja? Does Cam say anything bad about Ninja? Does D say anything bad about Ninja? Does Ashley say anything bad about Ninja? Do I say anything bad about Ninja? Does Polly say anything bad about Ninja? Does Kaylee say anything bad about Ninja? No. Who says bad things about Ninja? Nani, who's trying to save herself because she's the weakest link. Laurel, Jordan, Tori. And most of Twitter. I mean, <laughs> whoever, I mean, you gotta think the haters speak louder, so. Twitter is the cesspool. Twitter is the cesspool, you can't, yeah, you can't take anything they say seriously. It's just a bunch of haters. Twitter doesn't know Ninja. The people that are actually closest to Ninja and know Ninja say she's fucking awesome. Here, here's math. Even if a tweet gets 5,000 likes, and 300 comments, that percentage of the amount of followers that the challenge Twitter and or the Instagram or the people that view it is, it's like a minuscule, minuscule percentage. Most people who are like obsessing over Twitter and uh, Instagram are not, do not represent the actual viewership of the challenge. It's a very like how many millions of people or whatever, whatever the friggin' viewership of the challenges versus how many troll accounts are there on Twitter and on uh, those spoiler sites. I feel attacked. <laughs> <laughs> we're, just, we're just laying down some facts. So let's talk about this social experiment that you had. The main question that I have is, one, whose idea was it? And two, what was the, what was the intention behind it? What was the end game? And what were you guys trying to find out by doing the social experiment? We came up with that together only because... We're so fed up by people overanalyzing everything. So it's like if I put Polly in my story and I, you know, post him on my Instagram and he doesn't put me in his story and he doesn't put me in his Instagram and he's liking girls in bikinis photos. It's like people want to overanalyze like, oh, oh, that means they're fighting and he's cheating on her. He's probably fucking this girl and he's probably fucking that girl. And Car is like, so, so I, I feel like people are so desperate to fulfill what they want to believe and what they want to hope about me and him and our relationship. And they are so desperate to see it fail. The haters. We've got a lot of people that like love and support us. And those are the people that we're, we're catering to now, um, that we're making our posts about now, that we're encouraging now. 
Um, Cause there's so much love, but a lot of people that love and support are afraid to speak out because they get shit on by the haters who speak louder. Um, but there are those certain people um, that are rooting for us to fail and they're looking for any way to pull the pieces together to be like this, you know what I mean? And it's like, we're laughing because we're spending every second together, like every freaking second together. And we're like, you know what? Let's let's let them you, think. You let's... don't know if we're dating or not. Oh yeah, but we're, we're just living together. We're... It's true. <laughs> we we're not actually dating. We are living together, but we could just be roommates. We could just be friends. We could just be roommates. We might be having sex. We might not. We might not be. You actually don't even know. And that was the beauty. That's the beauty of the actual experiment. Is because number one, we let those hater people think that what they were putting out there was true, and that oh yeah, we really are <laughs> broken up. See, you were right this whole time. Then it was like just kidding. Um, <laughs> And it's like all of these media outlets that actually had the ability to reach out to us with a phone call, get a comment, get anything, like never did. And we let Emily from Us Weekly know from the very beginning what we were doing. We were texting her the whole time while we were doing it. We were sending her behind the scenes videos while we were doing it. And we're like, just so you know, just so we have proof, we have a witness, like this isn't, oh, they broke up, they got, they got, they freaked out. Now they're making up the story. Like we literally were talking from her from day one about what we were doing to cover our bases. Um, but it was just kind of one of those to like, just give one last middle finger to the haters and then redirect our attention to those who supported us. And so that's where we're at now. We just want to like team cringe, like the people that, that are in our corner, like, and then at the same time, so we're going to be there for them. We're going to encourage that. We're going to love and appreciate that. And we're also going to leave what we are very ambiguous. I'm texting other women right now. I'm on Tinder. <laughs> I'm on Bumble. We actually have a couple women upstairs that we're waiting to finish this podcast so we can have an orgy. Maybe. <laughs> I've got a guy, you know, tied up in the garage. You never know. You don't we're know. that shit now. Is he my boyfriend? I don't know. Did he propose to me a week ago? Are we... Am I pregnant? Oh. Am I his baby? I don't know. Do Somebody you already know. know. He doesn't say anymore. I don't know. Are you pregnant? I don't know. I mean, it's not my place to ask, but since you're here, if there is something you would like to share. We're not, we're not, I'm not going to release it here. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's why I'm not other places. Who knows? This is the beauty of what we did and how we left it off. No one's going to know anything. But also it was crazy because the whole, for like two weeks, we were literally watching like Twitter melt down with like people saying that I'm mentally insane. And yeah. unstable. You, you're crazy. And then, yeah, I mean, but like in a good way, like in a fun way. Like, you think you know, we're, all a little... we're all a little crazy. I mean, nobody d- goes on reality TV and is like, that's it, sane. <laughs> um, but then we started watching, like, people just be like, oh, well, it could be this girl. It could be this girl. It could be this girl. Like, throwing fucking spaghetti had, against the wall, yeah. broken one stick. I've had, like, I've gone on hikes with my guy friends before, and I've had people be like, oh my God. You're da- that's your new boyfriend is that who you're dating and it's like i just have a male friend <laughs> you know what i mean like but the, i but the crazy thing is it's like so many people that were spinning the hype were like these like people who are like the most unfaithful right. like terrible humans in the world and I we're mean... just like you know what let's just play let's just play a trick because first we're gonna say this we're gonna say we're open and then we're just gonna watch them for 24 hours then we're gonna say we're broken up and then we're just gonna watch them for 24 hours then we're gonna come out and say it was all a joke and now nobody knows what we really are. And we're going to watch them unravel because when people don't know what's going on with us, they just make up their own shit and they just do whatever the fuck. Here's the thing. Their it, narrative. It just all started because I was, like I said, just sick of people taking the pieces and trying to put something together that wasn't there. And it just was freaking annoying. So we threw this out there. It's over. It's done. Like I said, we're paying attention to the love now, and that's where we're at. So the only thing you guys know is we live together, we're, what we are, what we're doing, if I'm pregnant, if I'm married, if I'm engaged, if I'm proposed, if we're with other people, nobody's going to know now. Nobody's going to know. We just put it out there in, so, uh, so in, if in people, cryptic ways. If people see that I'm liking sexy guys' photos, go ahead. That's right. Take whatever you want. And if people see that I'm watching, that I'm liking dudes' photos with giant bulges, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know? <laughs> Follow the entire uh, Lakers I'm, cheerleading squad. I'm gonna, I'm gonna... So that's where we're at. We're just fucking with everybody now. Because it's just fun. It is. I'm glad you guys are having fun with it. Maybe people will just stop talking. But you want to know what's not fun? Going on social media and trying to say somebody's mentally insane. All right, tag. you're going to have your podcast. No. <laughs> your podcast. Oh, I'm not coming out. I'm not, talk- I'm not talking about it. Just started talking about it. I'm not talking about it. <laughs> 
streaming away and I'm going to get the fight to buy a stream now. All right, so obviously you're saying it. You guys, a social experiment, you know, a lot of people are negative all over social media and everything. And I feel like it's way easier to be negative than to be positive these days. And that's why the trolls come out. Now, speaking of, now, now, now speaking of somebody, a former cast member that has kind of taken jabs, uh, Marlon has been taking some jabs at Polly and some other challengers over the past couple of years. He desperately wants to get back on TV. Um, you know, and <laughs> yeah, you know, he. No. <laughs> I privately DM'd him. You don't privately DM anybody who speaks to Jemmy. Look, I need mm. to know. Because screenshots will always Hold go on. to Jemmy, will always go to the Hold internet. On. Look, I, me, and Ash, me and Ashley Kane are working out a fight, and it's I need true. a warm up fight. So I'm sorry. <laughs> the chair has been thrown. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm out of wine. <laughs> <sighs> Oh yeah. my god. <laughs> no. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Malik, you're okay? Settle down. That just made my night. Please continue. <laughs> <laughs> no, so so the, the the back end of this question is essentially is um does it feel like you and Polly have been a hot topic for a while now and everything and you guys' status keeps going up higher and higher? Uh, does it seem like current and former cast members are just bringing up your guys' names to boost their profile, to boost their stock, to kind of bring themselves some relevance? Yes. <laughs> yeah there we go that's it <laughs> okay that's it <laughs> simple questions require simple answers yes when the thing is is like if they want attention they're going to get attention from the hater trolls and the hater trolls love you know you know they got that their frothing hate boner going and they want to do like the carapoly hate boner circle jerk and I feel like it's just... Yeah, there's, yeah, there's people from shows that I don't even know exist yeah. that are tweeting about us just to fucking throw hate just to get likes and shit. I'm like, yeah. no. It like, works. It's a good formula. It works. This is this is Jemmy's tried and true formula. Are you ready, babe? What's Jemmy's tried no, and true it's, formula? No, wait, 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 no. no, it's not even just her. It's wait, wait, wait. her and the crew. It's uh, tweet something shitty about me. If that doesn't go over well, definitely redirect and tweet something shitty about Polly because you know people are really going to agree with you on that. And then if that doesn't go well, retract the statement and say you were just kidding or turn it into something else. And if that doesn't go well, delete your Twitter. Mm. <laughs> and then come back in a week. <laughs> That's the formula. What I, I don't understand is because like when, when, they, when all these people, when they're getting shit on, they delete their Twitters and then like... They'll be like, oh, I need to take a break from all the negativity. And then they just come back and they spew all the negativity. Because it's the only thing that gives them attention. Uh, it's the only thing that gives them attention. It's just shit on other people because you feel like if you shit on people, like I like to hang out with people that raise my stock, you know, like Cam. Because uh, Cam is like the classiest broad. In the world. Like I wish, I wish I could be more like Cam. She like holds herself so high. We can talk, you know, she's the type of person that will raise people up to her level and those are the people I want to be with rather than people that try to bring people down to their level. Do you know what I mean? And there's just a lot of that. And it's like, what are you into? Some people love, you know, they live off the negativity. They live off like the, let me try to sh make someone else look bad so I can make myself look better, get a few people to agree with me. And it is what it is. Nobody's gonna, not everybody's gonna love you. Not everybody's gonna hate you. And, my, my thing is, we, we live in like this reverse victimization. There's a lot of reverse cancel, victimization. Cancel call-out culture, because it's like, people can attack us nonstop, but the second that we bite back, it's like, We're a bully. how dare you say that? Or do that? You're a bully. But you it's like, changed. But my thing is like, <laughs> I don't know. It's like, the same, the same people that are, the same people that will like, sit there and be like, oh, we're not afraid of you guys in the game and the same people that'll try and get us banned from ever coming back. All right, Paul, you clearly have shit you want to talk about. <laughs> he can't help himself. I'm just eating my ice cream. Okay. <laughs> Feel free to have your own podcast sometime, Paulie. All right, so I've seen a lot of things with uh, Jen happening. And in the beginning, you guys were really close and really good friends. But then, out of nowhere, it just seemed like it turned and it's become almost a war yeah for a war you need two sides it's really just one-sided it's just her daily recap of what she feels that i'm doing with my life basically it's with jemmy's it's like today jemmy's thoughts how do i feel about Kara and polly today today jemmy's thoughts 
Cara and Polly are eating ice cream. I can't stand the fact that they eat that ice cream. Do they understand that there's children out there that don't have ice cream? How dare they enjoy ice cream? Day three, Jemmy's thoughts. Let's talk about Polly and Cara again. Let me just get some likes. Polly's a psycho. What a loser. What a fucking guy that's stupid. Like, 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 retweet, retweet, retweet. Day three, let's shit on Kara. Kara, do you ever wash your hair? Like, 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 reach, 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 reach. It's like, and then there's just me, like, I'm not washing my hair and riding my horse. I mean, she didn't lie. So, I mean, like, I, she's the only one that's uh, really uh, invested. We're kind of just living our lives, and I guess she's interpreting it. I mean, how did it happen? Is, was it just so random, or was it something progressive? I mean, it. I don't know. I was friends with her on. <coughs> I was friends with her on uh, Vendettas, and then from there it was just she just. Uh, I guess she got more engagement in not being cool with me. I don't know. Ask her. She, I'm sure she'll say I've changed. Or whatever the th I'm fake. It's just the same stuff that they all use when they actually don't have a definitive reason as to why they hate me. Just the just the verbal the verbal uh, regurgitated of the why we don't like cars. It's just they all use the same thing and nothing is specific. I'm very specific about why I dislike people. All right, so I have a question from Julian at Carmen Marie's T on Twitter. Very good friend of the podcast. Definitely good people. Big shout out to them. Uh, they have a question. They want to know. In her bio, she mentions hero or villain from the show. From your perspective. Why do you think that you're a hero or you're a villain? What's the meaning behind that? Let's go into that. The meaning behind that is because I've gone through so many challenges. I've been through so much. I've been on so many seasons. I've had so many story arcs, ups and downs. I feel like you're not a real character or a real essential part of anything if you don't change, if you don't become something different, if you're not constantly bringing something different. I feel a lot of people are the same people season after season after season after season they never change and never grow i've changed and i feel like that's what you're supposed to do you're supposed to grow and depending on what era you tuned into like are you a free agent's car maria are you a fresh meat to car maria did you come in on vendetta did you come in on more of the world's one when did you come in depending on when you came in and how you interpret me based on your own experiences and what you're seeing um determines whether you see me as a villain or a hero because a million people can look at the same thing, the same human, I and me, and see a ton of different things. And I've got half the people that are in my corner that are like, you're a boss, you've finally taken control, you've finally asserted yourself, you're finally winning, you're finally playing the game. Um, I've seen you grow. And then you've got people that are like, I don't like you, bully. You sent my favorite person home. It's like, go wash your hair, or brush your hair and wash your face. It's like, I got people that are incredibly nasty that see me as a villain, and then I see people that I have people that are like, you're still my hero. And it just depends on where you came in and what you're seeing. Is that is that where your shirt is coming from? The villain shirt? Yes. In fact, that's a beautiful segue. Um, I have been working on something I'm super proud of. You know I'm crazy about, like, uh, really stupid leggings, you know, like crazy designed leggings. Like, that's my thing. And socks. Oh, I see the and socks I, with, the knife, with the knives on the back. That was really cool. Yes. I teamed up. So there's two things that I'm really excited that are coming to fruition is I worked with um, the Shiznit socks on night socks. So I worked with them on the colors, the design. They're finally available, the Um, You can go to my link in my Instagram profile and it's, it's will be there. I have a link tree set up so you can check out the socks. They're available. Um, limited edition. And then that leads me to this shirt. And I've been working for like over a year with a La Mer crew and they made my dreams into a reality. And I'm currently wearing the shirt. This is, if you're seeing me as a villain, apparently, because a car is called, but some of you, I see me as a hero. <laughs> and you know, oh, every cute. day you might feel like something different, right? So this is my shirt. It's reversible. It depends on your mood. Um, this bra, hello, I'm flashing you, is part of the collection. The back is, um, I'm going to keep this, I'm going to keep, I'm only going to show you the shirt because I'm wearing the leggings too. I'm going to give you this little preview. 
I'm gonna give this a little preview, but then the shirt, the leggings, the bra, they're all gonna be up on the La Mera. We've collaborated. My name's on the label. Like I'm gonna, you know, autograph pictures, send that out. So I'm really excited that that's finally coming out. Like, I'm so excited. And I love the outfit. I'm so excited. It's like the greatest. Wait till you see it. I'll be posting on Instagram. I guess I'm going to finish this as a hero. <laughs> so all the listeners, where can I get those shirts from again? Just one more time. The shirt, the shirt is part of my La Mera um, collaboration. So it would be lamera.com. Um, or La Mera Sportswear, I'm not sure the exact website name, um, but it's, I have it set up on my link tree. I work with them all the time. Look up La Mera Sportswear on Instagram. And then the shirt, it's all pre-order right now. So I'm gonna do a week of pre-order. I'm gonna do, so by the time this comes out, it'll still be going on. The pre-order will still be going on. This whole outfit, it's limited edition. I'm gonna put out a code for 10% off and then that's for the pre-order. And then once it all goes out, then it'll just be the regular price. We'll be back in a moment. You're listening to Love War Challenges. What's good? Uh, how's it going? This is uh, Derek. Derek Kaczynski. So this is Polly, and you're listening to Love War Challenges. What up, Malik? This is Car Maria. This is a shout out to the Love War and Challenges podcast. We are totally awesome. Love War Challenges. For anyone listening to this, they're at LWC Podcast. World's most dangerous podcast. So I have a question for you. So well, ac- that's what I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> According to Instagram and Twitter, Tori is now engaged. Please tell us just how mad was you that Paulie wasn't able to be engaged to you or ask you to marry him. Just tell us about the fairy that built up and that built up what? inside of you because of it. Why are you so mad because of it? Where the hell are you getting this from, you weirdo? I, I got it from Twitter. <laughs> Twitter knows everything. Oh, Twitter thinks I'm mad. <laughs> yes. No. Yes. Uh, Speak about your anger no. with us. I just thought um, when the whole uh, engagement went on, I just thought it was it was part of an act. Um, I realize it's real, but I thought it was just you know part of an act, part of their story, part of what they were trying to push for their narrative. Um, and I just thought it was kind of corny. Um, and then the other thing too that kind of made me roll my eyes is before we entered the game, um, Polly had kind of mentioned to Tori, they would talk on the phone all the time. He mentioned to her, he's like, yeah, he goes, you know, I'm going to wait. He goes, you know, cause everybody asked like, when are you guys get married? He goes, I'm going to wait till I win a final. He goes, when I'm at the end of that final, I'm going to fly her in on a plane, tell TJ to bring her in. I'll propose her right there with my first win. So I'm a challenge champ and I can propose. He told that to Tori before they entered. And so when they did that, I was like, no, they did. I was like, I was like, Polly, did you tell Tori what you, your little your little fun fantasy plan? And he goes, why, yes, I did. <laughs> and I was like, all right. Um, me and Polly are, we could be married right now. <laughs> <laughs> we could be married. Uh, but it's not like real talk. Like I've got a lot of things that I want to accomplish myself. He's got a lot of things he wants to accomplish for himself. Like it's not like I want a ring. That, like this, that's it wasn't gonna happen. Like this season, regardless of if anybody proposed anybody, like we weren't planning on proposing to each other, we're getting married this season. When the time comes, if the time comes, maybe it already came. <laughs> maybe you'll know, maybe you won't. <laughs> but it'll be when we both feel is right. All right. So I, that's not something we would have planned. But when it did happen, I was like, that's cheesy. I was like, come on. All right. I just thought it was locked. I see that you are going to give us absolutely nothing on that. <laughs> Why would I be mad? I don't want to fucking marry Jordan. Like, <laughs> Jordan's some charity work. Like, so the last thing I want to ask you is I haven't been on Twitter as much as I should have in the past couple of days. That's not even a sentence you should ever use <laughs> for the rest of your life. But for the rest of your life, never use that sentence. <laughs> while I have you, let me ask you, in your opinion, or do you know as certain for a fact? that there has been a collaborative, straight up effort to make sure Pauly doesn't appear on season 35. Yes. Oh. Yes. Like the depths that we have discovered that people have gone and how everything's added up is mind blowing to the fact that it's like the only people that are outspokenly hateful towards Polly are people that are not in our alliance. 
Do you see CT, Leroy, Rogan? Do, like, do you see anybody else talking shit or do you see the people that Polly sent home being the loudest, talking the most shit, right? Those people in collaboration with other people, and this is all I'm kind of going to give you, went like, and I have inside rip, like it went pretty hard, pretty deep. Sounds, now we're getting dirty. But um, <laughs> to, to make sure like, you know, it worked with Turbo, didn't it? It did. It worked with Turbo. You speak loudly enough. Oh, like the things that happened in that, that challenge house with Turbo and the way that Jordan was running around, what you guys didn't see is Jordan was very vocal. It was about two or three days before we found out from the time that Turbo got taken away, from the time that Turbo got, uh, we found out Turbo wasn't coming back. Two or three days of, of Jordan, every single room, anybody who he could talk to, he's like, you know, if they bring Turbo back and anything happens, he goes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step up to Turbo again. I'm going to let Turbo hit me. If Turbo hits me, he goes, I, I'm going to sue. I'm going to sue everybody. I'm going to sue them all for bringing him back, knowing that he's a danger to me. I'm going to sue. I'm going to do a lawsuit. Are you talking about Bunham so, and Murray? Yeah. Jordan mm. threatened legal action should Turbo come back in the house constantly. He's like, we'd have a strong case. You know, Turbo is already a threat. He's already made, he's already had two infractions. If they let him back again, he goes, I'm suing. He goes, that's it. I can sue. I have a case. He goes, anything happened? Like, he goes, I'll make sure something happens. Like, that's what was going on in the house, right? So that's why Turbo is not around. But a lot of people said it was on Tori. Tori is the one who went to the challenge gods and said that she oh, didn't yeah. feel unsafe. Tori did too. Tori did too. They were both running around the house, but it's like Jordan wasn't, I'm just saying, like, Jordan wasn't like, you know, the strong, like, oh, beat him up. Like, Jordan wanted no part of Turbo coming back in the house. And the only reason he didn't want Turbo back in the house is because he knew Turbo was not working with him and that Turbo would take him out in an elimination. That's why they rallied so hard and they were threatening legal action nonstop. So it's like, it, production had no choice. You can't send somebody back in the house when that's being threatened. So that's why Turbo's gone. Um, Jordan worked his ass off for that. And then um, with regards to Polly and him not being there, let's just say, the same sort of behind the scenes on a larger scale without Polly actually doing anything to cause it, some hardcore shit got pushed. So they've learned that if you can't beat him in a game, you can't beat him physically. Jo uh, Polly's already physically taken Johnny out in elimination. Um, or, you know, he's taken him out in elimination, taken multiple of them out in challenges, beaten them in multiple challenges. Polly's proven to be a force in challenges. You can't beat him politically because Polly found a way, despite us being like supposedly the most hated people, you know, ever to be on the challenge, Polly found a way. Did we not have all of a sudden almost the entire house in our alliance? Oddly, how did that work, right? So if you can't beat him physically in the game, athletically, if you can't beat him politically, what do you do? Find a way to get him banned. And unfortunately, Polly is part to blame in taking a little bit of the bait that was sent his way. Um, and he's owning up to his own hot-headedness. And we'll learn from that. What was taken upon by the challenge gods is perfectly understandable because when you get enough people crying wolf, you can't take the risk. But um, they were doing exactly that, crying wolf, a large group of them. So Let me ask you, do you think the challenge gods, when it comes to out-of-the-game conduct and, and off-season conduct, do you think the challenge gods got it right? Or do they, need to, do they need to reconsider how they do things about when it comes to off-season conduct? I have no comment on any of that <laughs> because I value my future on the challenge. I'll just say whatever the challenge gods do, they're right. I agree with them wholeheartedly. Do whatever you're going to do because you're signing my paycheck. So nothing against the challenge gods, but everything against the assholes that, you know, <clears throat> we, are, we are on a, you know, it's like if you're supposed to be the best of the best, if you're supposed to be the greatest of the great, if you're not afraid of anything, then why are you afraid of Polly? We make fun of him enough. Why are you so afraid of him hardcore enough to get him banned? Because you're afraid of what he can do to you in a game? But doesn't that make your castmates cowards for taking this route yeah facts <laughs> yeah they're scared Polly doesn't care if he goes into a house and literally there's a hundred people and 
98 of them are against him. He will still go in. He will still fight. If he has to do an elimination, he will fight an elimination. If he has to do, you know, he, he's praying for the day that it's an individual competition because he wants to be able to shine in competition. He, he's raised in athletics. Like he, that's his dream. That's his love. Like he loves the challenges for being able to compete, for being able to showcase every aspect of who he is and how he can play among everybody else. And unfortunately, he literally wasn't, was the opportunity was taken from him because people are actually afraid of him in competition. The same as Turbo. Damn you, Papa Roach. Yeah. <laughs> Next time he's only allowed to sing Taylor Swift. But Papa Roach is amazing. I love Papa Roach. I mean, gosh, they, they, the challenge used Papa Roach's song in like the first challenge. <laughs> they know what time it is. But um, yeah. now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into one of my favorite segments. The thing that always gets us <laughs> into trouble. And that's going okay. to be word association. I would love to get blocked by <laughs> another half of the cast. So <laughs> you ready for this car? Yeah. All right. So first on the list is going to be Josh. <laughs> I think that's it, actually. Just use that. Next up is going to be Zach. Scared. Just a scared baby. Mm. Okay. Turbo. Superhero. Mm. Okay. Wes. Sneaky. Ashley. Millionaire. <laughs> I like that. Ninja. Yay! <laughs> it's what she does when she jumps and climbs up on things. She goes, and yay, and yay. She's just a bundle of light. Cam. Queen. Killer. Class. I mean, Same exact answer you gave last water. time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's just a, she's a rock star. All right. Jordan. Misogynist. Holy. Uh, don't look at me. I'm... Future challenge winner. Uh, okay. <laughs> And last but not least, Esther. Boss bitch. She ate the one. I love her. Fucking love her. All right. So I've been a fan of this show my entire life, ever since the first season. And I've always came up with ideas on like themes of seasons. And a theme that they've never done that I think would be fun would be a theme uh, just called allies. You know, you get, you get very similar to Battle of the Seasons. You get four teammates, two male, two female. So, so, so here's the question. You're the captain of your team. You get to pick another girl and two guys. You can't pick Polly or CT because that's just way too simple. Way too simple. So who'd you pick? Can I not pick Cam either? No, you can pick Cam because that's not as historic. Okay, Cam. And what other guys would I pick? <laughs> no, I think so you pick one other girl and I two pick, guys. Oh, one girl, Cam. Okay, so now it's mm -hmm. just two guys. Mm -hmm. um, you know what, Leroy? would be one because he has uh, a change. There is a change in him that you'll see that you've never seen in him before. And he is loyal to a fault. He's straight up. He doesn't complain. Um, he might not have the brains, but he's got the muscle. He's got the endurance. And like, I would totally love to run with Leroy. And then other than Leroy, Theo, I guess. I love Theo. I mean, to an extent, we've had an issue, but as a partner, as a competitor, um, I would take Theo as a partner again, because I've worked with him before. And, oh, freaking Turbo. But Turbo's, Turbo's good, too. Forgot about Turbo because, you know, he got cast away from the show. I'd take Leroy, I'd take Leroy and Turbo. That's, and that's, that's definitely a solid team right there, because I feel like if I didn't say you can't pick Polly or CT... I feel like I would have just named most of your team for you. Yeah. So. <laughs> Who would you think are the best veterans to not win a final? And by veteran, I'm going off what I believe is like five or more seasons. Cam hasn't been on five seasons. Has she? Oh, I think it's best. four. I could be wrong. Maybe four. Uh, best veteran who hasn't won. Polly has only been on four. Uh, I don't know. Give me some options. Leroy. My personal is Leroy. Leroy everybody, huh? Leroy. everybody likes him. I just love Leroy. Yeah, so I guess I'm just keep saying the same people that I like over and over. <laughs> Can't knock it. Who do you think doesn't get enough credit um, from the fans on how good they are in the game? Guy or girl. Or guy and girl, I'm sorry. Uh, Ninja and Polly. Yeah, and then uh, my final question. 
Um, this is something that I, I've always found very interesting and I've always wanted to ask every challenger is, what does the challenge mean to you? Oh my gosh, that's a deep question. Right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's I do. Um, it means to me, because I've been doing it for, I think, about almost 10 years. Um, I've grown up on the challenge. I have learned so much about people, about myself, about my, you know, pushing my limits. I've pushing fears. Like if I never did the challenge, I would totally be the girl that just stays home, paints pictures, doesn't go out. Um, I'd be lucky if I went to a gym. I mean, I'm sure I'd stay fit in some aspect, but not in the regards that I do to now. Like I'm not a thrill seeker. I'd never jump out of a plane. I don't do heights over water. I still would be doggy paddling in a pool somewhere. Like <clears throat> I've been able to do so much because of the challenge that I never thought was possible. Like all the amazing things that I've done, the experiences that I lived through, it's like I would never have been able to do that if it weren't for the chance that was given to me for the challenge. So for that, I'm incredibly thankful. I mean, it's allowed me to, you know, pay off all my bills, become debt free, um, get a, a home, a car, LASIK. Like, I mean, the, the financially, the way that has changed my life. Um, I unfortunately this season ha had for whatever reason, like, I think I just got <clears throat> so overwhelmed with, you know, the excessive hatred that's been going on. Um, and I'd let that kind of get to me. And even though I was surrounded by people that loved me and had my back and I had the best alliance ever and I should have nothing to worry about, I think I was just so emotionally and physically just drained that it was hard for me to remember who I was and find my light again. And so I'm hoping that this time away, I'm able to not only like, I've already found it, like my light, my happiness, like what makes me me and what makes people that love me, love me. It's coming back, it's back, but also be able to just like, remember like who I was outside of just the talent challenge world. Like I need a kind of, I needed this time to pull myself away and, and to just, you know, remember what real life really is because having gone to, and I won't say anything about this season, but going to those finals, like multiple finals, gives you less time to rest in between. And it's a blessing to be able to go to them and you, you know, but there's less time to rest mentally to remember who you are and what real life is when you're just like, your bags aren't even unpacked and you're like, just putting new underwear and you're like, here we go again. And it's like, you know, that's why I wear the same shirt season after season after season. I just have a whole lot of time in between to like pack, my, to pack a new bag. I mean, so I really hope that this just helps me feed more of the love, feed more of the positive, find who I am again, and be that girl that a lot of people were rooting for and hope that, you know, I still have inside me. Because I do realize that this season, you know, we are making power moves. I'm part of a strong alliance. We were able to flip everything because of, you know, clutch with Ninja and then the glue and the, the brains between Polly and Cam and Kaylee and everything going on there. Um, but I, I do realize this season I'm not the happiest version of myself. And I'm ready to like find that and bring that back again because I just feel like I kind of got lost. So, but the challenge is, you know, I, I hope to do more and I hope to come back better, stronger, smarter, clearer in the head and, you know, just ha learn to have fun again. So, Cara, thank you so much for taking your time to spend with us and answer some questions. We definitely appreciate you. Thank you so much. And we only wish the best for you. That's thank you. That's gonna do it for us. Bananas, close us up. All right, another great episode, Posters. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you stay updated by following us on Twitter and Instagram at LWC Podcast. Join us up on Facebook at facebook.com slash love war challenges. Also, check out our new website, lwcpodcast.com. Make sure while you while you listen to us on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play. SoundCloud, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio that gives us five stars, gives us a great review, and most importantly, make sure you subscribe. Have a great day, Posters. Peace.